Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 2. Now, last episode, I thought I completed everything in the Forest of the Fallen Giants. However, I guess I didn't exhaust the complete dialogue for Kale, and he's not in his mansion yet. So we're going to do that real quick and then head back to Majula. Incredible, really, isn't it? Such a map to be chiseled in stone. Oh, but one thing. I would not venture deep into the mansion. Now, I can't be certain, but I've heard disturbing noises. Something about it feels wrong. Just be careful, please. That's him hinting towards the skeletons in the basement that we I'll already took be back care of. In Majula soon. Perhaps we will meet again and discuss maps at our leisure. I'm going to go cut away to um, talking to Kale in the mansion. I will see you guys in two seconds. Real quick, though, I had to exact my revenge for some Titanite shards. All right. After exhausting all of Kale's dialogue in the little tunnel back in the forest and defeating all the skeletons in the basement... Kale will reconvene here by this map that he was talking about. And as you can see, there's a fire lit on the map. Oh, hello again. You've made it. The map, I presume. Of course. Take a good look. Even more flames have appeared. I don't know what causes it. Did you see the flame on the map? It wasn't there when I came here before. I don't know what explains it. But there is something greatly comforting about that flame. It seems to fulfill something very precious, deep within the soul. Something essential. I would not venture far into that hole. It was blocked by a wall, something built long ago. But it was crumbling, and I finished the job. Now a foul sound echoes within. Did you see the flame? It wasn't there when I came here before. I don't know what explains it. But there is something greatly comforting about that flame. It seems to fulfill something very... something... Eh? I would not... Yeah, okay, that's, that's everything. So basically, um, what this is, is when we, uh... I'm not sure if it's when you light certain bonfires, I think it's when you actually beat certain bosses in the area, this map will light up with flames. We'll come back and check on it periodically throughout our adventure. There is a little bit of an easter egg with that map, but I'm not going to talk about that until later because I'm sure unless some uh, Dark Souls vets have looked it up, you will never, ever, ever see that easter egg because it is... it's a doozy to get. Don't know how I missed that item on the first run, but this is the other path we could have taken at the beginning of our adventure. There is nothing stopping you from going this way except for getting wrecked. As you can see, there's a pathway open, and if you look through this mirror, there's an item behind there, and it looks like there's another pathway. But the contraption doesn't move, so I guess we're just shit out of luck, and we're gonna have to go this way. So if you go down here, and I believe... Right in here, there's a chest. This chest contains the Crimson Parma, which is, I think it's a better shield than the uh, leather shield. It's actually exactly the same. It's actually a little worse because you um, has more weight. Alright, well, disregard that. So this door right here, it took me a while to figure out how to get this open. If you look right here, you're going to see a very um, 
Hard to see lever, I guess. Maybe it's hard to see. Maybe I'm just blind. I actually am blind. Well, not actually blind, but I can't see for shit. So. Probably why I missed it. I refused to wear glasses for the largest portion of my life. And then I got contacts. And after I got contacts, I, um, I suddenly outgrew the, uh, I guess the fear of wearing glasses. I will say though, glasses kind of like hurt my head after wearing them for too long and I don't like having my peripherals cut off. It's a little annoying. Anyway, here we are at Hyde's Tower of Flame and as you can see, we have a lot of um, adversaries blocking us. Including that guy over here there. Now this guy right here, this is a Hyde Knight. Hyde Knight, Hyde Knight. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. They're chill until you beat the boss of this area. We're going to actually let him chill for right now. Break out. We're going to kill this guy real quick. These guys are big, but they're really... Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. They're big, and they do have quite a bit of HP. However, they are not the hardest thing to take care of. Gonna light that bonfire up, and then I actually am going to kill this Hyde Knight up here. These guys are pretty dangerous, so if you're inexperienced or don't have good gear, would not recommend fighting them. However, we have the fire sword, so I am pretty confident. As you can see, four hits, and I only took about half his HP, so these guys are very strong. Pretty good way of farming souls, too, seeing as you're right next to this bonfire. I actually am going to take the liberty of farming these guys for a little bit. They have a drop that I am uh, pretty keenly interested in. So I am going to cut back to whenever I die or I get the drop. And I promise you the, uh, the former is probably going to be what happens first. Ooh, also real quick because I know this is probably pissed somebody off. There we go. Great soul arrow. Alright, back to the farming. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Whew. Race is averted. I guess this is also a pretty good opportunity to explain rusted coins and show off what they do. So you're going to use one. And I believe the buff is active for five minutes or until you die or teleport back to a bonfire. Why I put emphasis on the teleport is because if you rest at a bonfire, the effect will stay active. Which is pretty um, important when it comes to farming these guys. Okay, and we are back. Now, you may be thinking, Ricky, what happened? You're back at Majula. Did you succeed? I, I did not succeed. I did not get any of the drops that I wanted. But we got the souls that I wanted. So, obviously, if you farm in that area, you're going to have an abundance of souls. You can overlevel, of course, but like I said, I'm not trying to overlevel, so I'm going to show this off. So, our friend Mothlin... What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to spend a thousand souls here. Let's just buy this infantry armor just because. Thanks very much. So now we're going to go rest at the bonfire and come back. All right. And coming back here, you're going to see he's kind of sit up on his little stool now. He's got a little more confidence in himself. So now he sells a little bit more armor. He sells royal soldier armor. He sells the elite knight armor from Dark Souls 1. And he'll sell a couple of other things later on. Now what we want to do is we want to spend 16,000 souls. So we're going to go here. We're going to go four, six, eight, nine thousand. That's 11,000, I believe. Let's sure we'll buy that. We'll buy that. And I think that'll do it. Thanks very much. All right. Back to the bonfire again. So now if you come back after you've spent 16,000 souls, you're going to see that Mothlin's feeling himself now. He's all sprawled out, legs spread. Um, sorry, have we met? Oh, he's sorry. bougie now. I've been awfully busy lately. Care to look over my wares? 
Please, be my guest. I upgraded my stock recently. Although it may be a bit Now he thinks we're a little too he's a little too good for us. Now you're gonna be able to buy the Alva armor. And later on, this is where you're gonna get a lot of boss soul or a uh, boss armor. Are you sure? Now what we wanna do is jump down this hole. After you jump down this hole, before you go and reclaim your souls, you're going to want to go talk to Mothlin again. So, back at Mothlin, if you talk to him after you uh, spent 16,000 souls on him when he unlocks his second batch of armors, and you have zero souls, you need armor. Talk to him. In a spot of bother, are we? Here, take this. My compliments. He'll give you an armor set, the Helm of Aorus. Sure? Well. And then we can just reclaim our stuff right here. All right, with all that being done, I'm gonna head back to Hyde's Tower Flame and we're gonna actually begin our exploration through that area. I know it's been a lot of um, Majula stuff and side stuff. This game just throws so much at you at the beginning, so it's kind of hard at first when you want to show everything off. I promise. The farther we get into the story, the less of this kind of side stuff there's going to be and more um, just story progression, NPC development, and all the stuff that we love. Like me dying. Alright, back at Hyde's Tower. Let's finally begin clearing out this area. These big guys, like I said, they're pretty easy. I just gotta do strafe around them, honestly. This one right here, though. The guys with the maces always mess me up. I just like to kind of get behind them. Not get hit by everything. Perfect. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was like, what just happened? Pick that up for a nice human effigy. And we're gonna head up here. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna Estus Blast right here. So we're gonna kill this guy. And once we kill him, we gotta be quick. So we kill him, and then this trapdoor opens. We're gonna stand on the trapdoor. Pause. So doing this, if you see the um, arena in there, there is uh, pretty small. However, if you do this, you will notice another layer is going to come up from the water. Excellent. Let's pick this bad boy up. And we're going to head... Alright, and we're going to head up in here. Now, in here, we have three of these knights. However, they want to honor the 1v1. So, we're going to give them that. We're going to give them the standard 1v1. Ow. Get wrecked, son. Once you beat the 1v1, then they're going to jump you. Why? Because they just saw their homie get wrecked. That was actually a really dumb swing. Surprised that one didn't hit me. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna come at me? It's not look like it. Okay. We're not gonna worry about him for now. We're gonna go this way. Now this is a little bit of a tricky situation. What I like to do, honestly, I'm just gonna far cast right here. Because this hide knight is actually uh is actually a mean guy and he's just gonna come at you. I'm gonna stab him. Yeah, that's ooh, ooh. Alright, one more stab. Perfect. Alright. Back it up, back it up. Pop a life gem. Let's pop another life gem. Alright, we're back in action. Alright, excellent. We are making haste. So we're gonna go down here, we're gonna collect this item real quick, Divine Blessing. Divine Blessings are always our friends. 
And then we're going to head up here, and you're going to see another Hide Knight. And this one is also very, very mean. However, he is at a disadvantage because this is a spear guy. Now, if you fight him on this staircase, I'm not really... I'm showing this off very, very poorly. I need you to... Okay, I about to say, I need you to do something so I can heal. Oh! Punch, punch! No! Damn it! I'll be right back. Alright, we're back, and we're mad now. Ow. So what I was saying is, if you're on the stairs, usually he, um... He goes over your head, but I guess, you know... He got patched in 2023. So when you come up here... You're gonna see that dragon is still sleeping. Now, when you are ready... Make a mad dash. You gotta be quick here. You gotta be quick. You gotta be quick. You gotta be quick. <laughs> Alright. Now that we're down here, we're just gonna go hacking away. I think we're actually... Eh, no, nah, we should be fine. He's kind of the same way as the last giant. Just chop at his legs. Avoid the stomps. He should be golden. In doing so, we are now Dragonborn. Also, I gotta stand on these every opportunity I get. Pull that down. And then we want to stand right here. Oh. I swear that used to crush you. <laughs> Anywho, we get a petrified dragon bone and a watch dragon parma up here. We're open this chest. That uh, petrified dragon bones and upgrade material for weapons we don't have yet. We're gonna get five human effigies and an old radiant life gem. And then we have this. Prepare yourselves to meet a familiar friend. Look who it is. From the lands of Laudrin. Ornstein himself. I think. I don't know enough about Dark Souls 2 lore to know if this is Ornstein or just some dude in Ornstein's armor. But I like to believe it's Ornstein. He isn't too bad. Obviously, Dark Souls 1 um, veterans will know this fight against Ornstein Smo was absolutely ridiculous. However, just the 1v1 isn't too bad. He also has the electrical attacks he used to, but it looks like they're um, infused with darkness. So that is definitely something just to take note of. I think it looks really cool. It kind of adds to the, um, I don't know. I don't know what the reasoning for the purple lightning is. You know, the Kakashi buff. But it kind of makes you think, like, did Ornstein get taken over by the Abyss? And because of that, did it infuse his magic with a stronger form of it? Or possibly weaker? Kinda of trying to wait out. There's a certain attack, but if he's not gonna do it, I'm not gonna sit here and get stabbed by him until I do, because that is not a uh, it's not optimal. Alright, you that was your last Ooh. An epic finish to an epic warrior. For that, you get the old Dragon Slayer Soul, which, of course, you'll be able to get Ornstein Spear for it. And the old Leo Ring. The old Leo Ring is the ring I was talking about that uh, makes the dual rapiers overpowered. It'll counter your thrust weapon counterattacks, which is basically like if you hit them with a poke before they um, finish their attack animation. 
it will proc a lot more than you think. I promise you that. In here, you get some cracked blue eye orbs. And a couple of shields. And we get the opportunity to talk to this guy. This is no place for one such as you. Be gone. You are not needed. Transient being, you would never make a knight of the blue, and I have nothing more to say. Be gone. You are not needed. This guy's kind of a douchebag. I believe you either need to invade someone as a blue sentinel or you need to help someone as a white phantom. I'm going to put that on screen right now. If you head on down here, though. You'll see a bonfire. Which is perfect because this is a purely optional area. But I like to take care of this before I take care of the actual area. So with all of that being done, we've made the Hyde's Tower of Flame. We helped Mothlin become a rich, spoiled son of a bitch. We got told off by this dude that thinks he's so cool because he's looking at a sunken city. Nerd. And we encountered one of our idols, one of the Knights of Gwyn. Ornstein himself. And unfortunately, we had the best of him in combat. Next episode, we're going to explore the other way. See what's hiding in that tower over there. The one that's lit on fire that looks all epic and better than every other tower here. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see y'all next time.